Now let's look at some data on just how much India's businesses have, or maybe have not, changed over time. The particular question of interest has to do with the reforms from the 1990s. After these reforms, how much, in fact, did India's businesses change? We're going to look at a database that covers about 70% of India's industrial output. Our source for all of this information will be a very interesting 2009 paper called India Transformed. First, let's consider some changes we do see, and that would include about $70 billion in new foreign direct investment over the years 2000 to 2005 in areas such as tech, computer, pharmaceuticals, and telecom. These developments are, of course, fairly well known. In general, the biggest change we do see has to do with lots of new firms in the service sector, and we have a video unit devoted to this topic alone. What's most striking about the paper, and perhaps most surprising to many readers, is just how much didn't change in the Indian economy following the reforms of the 1990s. And here are two quotations from the authors. Here's the first one, right here, quote, the data suggest an economy still dominated by the incumbents, state-owned firms, and those firms that existed before the first wave of reforms. Here's another indicative quotation. Quote, India does not seem to have gone through an industrial shakeout phase in which incumbent firms are replaced by new ones. And the authors, of course, show this with some numbers. There's a surprisingly low level of turnover in Indian firms. The authors also find that rates of return for Indian firms over time, they're actually remarkably stable. This suggests an economy where there's not a lot of Schumpeterian creative destruction going on. It's striking how much state-owned firms remain prominent in the Indian economy. Over the 20-year period under consideration, their fraction of sales, assets, or profits, those numbers really haven't declined that much and state-owned firms are more significant in India than in most other countries, including the transitional economies of Eastern Europe. To give you some concrete numbers, looking at the years 2001 to 2005, we find that in this database, state-owned firms account for about 59% of total assets. In the agricultural sector, they account for about 90% of business activity, and in financial services, state-owned firms account for about 80% of economic activity. Of course, those numbers are fairly high. The overall lesson, I think, is this. I would put it this way, that Indian businesses have by no means undergone a total revolution. That the reforms of the 1990s and a bit before and a bit after those reforms were very real, but in a lot of critical regards, the Indian economy has changed less than people think. It may be more stable than people think, and in some critical regards, it is more inefficient than perhaps people had realized during all the talk of India's economic reforms.